Hi everyone, my name is PK and here I've got a client of the Property Investment Accelerator, um, David Oliver, who joined the Property Investment Accelerator course a little while ago and he's just bought a pretty amazing deal over in Perth. He's based in Sydney um, and the purpose of this video is really to kind of show the property that he bought. I'll share my screen in a second, go through the numbers and me for, for me to really, you know, ask David you know, how he got it, what his biggest lessons were, biggest tips were buying interstate without a buyer's agent, positive cash flow, high growth property. Um, and hopefully me or David or both of us will drop some golden nuggets. So everyone, those of you who are watching, listening, you know, you actually benefit and get that one step closer to getting a deal just like that. So before I go on, David, I know we've already been talking, but um, thank you for making time for this. Thanks for having me, PK. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So if you don't mind, David, um, let me just share my screen with everyone and let's just go through the deal real quick. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see this guys. This is the properties you can see it's, you know, really nice um, brick home, you know, low maintenance brick and tile home, single story. This is over in WA. So David got this for 428,500. Okay, that was the purchase price, which was about 20 or 30 or $35,000 under market value. Okay, um, and what do we mean by that? You know, if you look at RP data, if you look at comparable sales, this should have gone for another 20, 30, $35,000. So he's got a great deal. I'll ask him in a second how he actually got that. But you can see it's you know really nice kitchen inside, um, has been recently renovated. It's not the original condition. The rent for this will be easily $420 per week plus. Actually, if you go to the suburb and you try to find rental properties, they're more sort of 480 plus, but just to be super, super conservative, we'll say this will get you know, 420, 430. So the yield is above 5% positive cash flow property, um, you know, if not well above 5% if, you know, the actual, um, if the actual comparable rents you know, transpire. And the block size is really good as well. You can see it's got good living spaces, 739 square meters. You know, it's already rented. It's in a cul-de-sac, beautiful family home. Um, I feel like I'm selling this home right now. <laughs> um, there's like a, a table tennis table at the back, nice sort of alfresco entertainment area. I mean, the growth metrics are great for this as well. You can see it's great for families. These are the types of properties that, you know, our clients buy. And I think people should be buying. I mean, there's just, it's a good fundamental property, low maintenance in Perth. These are highly desirable, you know, recently renovated. You can't really go wrong. So David, if I sort of start asking you some questions now, if you don't mind, um, let, let's maybe just start from the start. So, you know, what, like, what do you do professionally and what, what was your property background before you decided to join the Property Investment Accelerator? Yeah. Um, yeah. So my background, I, I work in IT sales in, in Sydney. I live in the CBD. Um, I have absolutely no, no property background. Um, so I was actually saving for, to buy in Sydney. Um, so, and then I went, I went through a divorce uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, basically starting again and yeah, that's kind of no background. Um, so this is actually my first, first property. Right. Uh, yeah, so I was looking into property development. I was looking, um, I wanted to do something on the side. Um, I was looking at maybe doing a business, but I stumbled across PK, your course. And um, yeah, and just having done a bit of research into property development, it's a lot harder than what people might think, um, especially people who are new to property development. So I thought a much easier path would be just to, you know, get, reasonably good at property investment and maybe I could do property development later later on in life. Um, and yeah, so basically just stumbled across um, your group and yeah, just went from there. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good, maybe a good decision as well. I think it took me three to five properties before kind of building the confidence and the requisite skill set to contemplate development like there's so much to lose there's so high risk to do developments you need a lot of money to start and yeah it's it's not it's not for everyone so probably i don't know 
I don't want to put words in your mouth, but probably a wise choice. Um, and so, you know, you said you stumbled across my Facebook group, like what, obviously every man and his dog is trying to sell a course or some sort of service in Australia related to property. Like what kind of instilled in you trust that this was going to be worth it? This would actually make sense. You know, you're coming from a, a background with no experience. So there was, I don't know, there's probably some skepticism or something like what kind of drew you towards this course and building your confidence enough to do it? Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I didn't look at too many of your videos, probably only like five or 10. It wasn't, okay. many, it wasn't many, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I could just tell like, you're a genuine person, um, like you mean well, and you're trying to, you know, do the best for your customers. And yeah, I saw some of the customer testimonials and they all seemed really good. Um, so I just didn't, yeah, didn't want to mess around. It's, mm. yeah, for me, it was more important just to get in quickly rather than spending another, you know, six months, you know, trying to research stuff. So, um, yeah, I liked what I saw and, yeah, just went, went ahead with it. And, yeah, it's really that simple. Yeah. Well, it's sim I think it's like just hearing you say that it's sort of like simple for the simple and it's complicated for the complicated. Like there's a lot of people also. Um, you know, right or wrong that, you know, do their due diligence for six months, 12 months, 18 months, you know, and miss out on a lot of growth. So I think you've just kind of taken um, the steps really quickly and yeah, kudos to you. And, and so you're based in Sydney, um, David, and you've obviously bought in Perth, you know, I've talked about Perth before as I wouldn't say Perth is a hot spot and you can just put a blindfold on and just buy anywhere, but it's definitely at the bottom of its growth cycle and that growth is occurring. It definitely is occurring. What kind of, maybe I'll ask a two-part question, um, what kind of, I know we focus on data, but how did you find the suburb without actually going to Perth, like having enough confidence to put down $400,000 of, of money in a property across the other side of Australia? I think that's the first question. How did you build that confidence? And the second is, how did you build the confidence to do your due diligence, you know, without catching a flight? You don't use buyer's agents, obviously. Maybe if you could just, um, I don't know, give some advice or give some tips to, to people who are also looking in Sydney or Melbourne to buy borderless, you know, how you did it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, yeah, just from your course basically gave me the confidence. So um, it, it basically outlined all the steps. So it was pretty easy, the whole process, to be quite honest. Um, but yeah, just in terms of like buying interstate, um, yeah, obviously, I just looked at all the data, all the data in the course, um, and, you know, it's pretty black and white, the data. So, I mean, I had to do a bit of due diligence. There was one suburb, um, a nearby suburb, which is growing. There's a lot of development approvals over the next 10 years. So um, I had to do a bit of due diligence into that. Um, <clears throat> but outside of that, um, yeah, it was pretty easy. I just, you know, found the right team. I did have to call around a little bit to find the right people um, just to help me out. But um, once I found them, it was quite easy. Um, yeah, it was actually surprisingly easy to actually buy interstate. Um, I wouldn't have done it without, without the course. Um, I probably wouldn't have had the confidence. So um, yeah, just having the knowledge and going ahead, just, yeah, it's quite easy um, to yeah do that. Yeah. It's, it's pleasing to hear that because like that was sort of my aha moment, you know, from the very first property that I bought 10 years ago, it was always interstate. And I was like, property managers are doing my due diligence for me. They're doing it really thoroughly. They're not charging anything for it. They don't have a bias or conflict of interest because they're not the ones trying to sell me the property. And if they do lie, you know, and I give them the management of the property, something's going to come up in the future. So they're going to get, you know, bitten in the back that way. So yeah, that was kind of a aha moment for me. And it's just strikingly simple if you know how to do it, which I think is, is what you said as well. And the other thing that I just wanted to highlight here, David, is I think you were telling me that we can actually add value to this house. It's a three bedroom, one bathroom house at the moment. By spending another four or $5,000, see this living area, we could coordinate it out, out, you know, have this area where there's the desk as another bedroom. And then... Um, you've got an extended sort of um, uh, bathroom or laundry area, you could make another toilet 
and it would become a four bedroom, two bathroom or two toilet house where it lifts the value from 428 up beyond 480. So spend $5,000, get another 60, $70,000 of manufactured equity is is that right david are you able to just expand on that a little bit yeah exactly exactly so yeah the idea came when i did the property inspection with the property manager the idea the idea actually came from the tenants okay um, to do this so um yeah definitely and I, I did the research on you know four by twos in the suburb and it's considerably more so i think very easy because as you can see the aircon and the power and everything lights are all kind of already there it's just a matter of putting in a wall um and with the second second bathroom i did have a really long it was about a 40 minute call with the building inspection guy he was really generous with his time and another thing i learned from pk's course again so is to you know have those relationships with you know the building and pest and you know electrical all those guys um but he said a very similar thing. There's already a wet area with a, a, a toilet and shower already there. It's just a matter of um, expanding or extending the wall and putting in a vanity um, to, to actually make that a proper, um, you know, second bathroom. So, yeah, it's a pretty small renovation cost um, that can, yeah, basically um, help to, to basically, yeah, manufacture that, um, that e equity. Yeah, and you could manage that entirely it's not a huge renovation, you know, four or $5,000, you could have your property manager do it, they might do it for free, or they might, you know, take four or $500 to manage that, they would have handle all the trades, people, everything like that. And then you've manufactured yourself, you know, a good 60, $70,000 um, of equity. And I think that's the benefit as well, right? Like, finding these cooler suburbs where you have a bit of time to think, um, you can do so much more with these properties, as opposed to, you were saying before, David, that you were looking in Adelaide and it was just such a hot market. So, you know, can you just speak about that for a second? Yeah, I was, I was looking in Adelaide. Um, in, the, the suburb was Happy Valley and, um, yeah, I put in some offers and everything was selling within two or three days, um, you know, 30, 40K more than, you know, what I kind of thought it was worth. Um, and yeah, when I looked at the growth, over the, you know, just following PK's course again, just um, looking at the, you know, the growth, it was quite a lot. So I, I kind of had the feeling it's more at that kind of higher end of the cycle. Um, you know, there could be, there could be, you know, not a lot of growth left um, in, in some of those places. So yeah, the other, the other thing is I was able to quickly pivot to, to WA and that again, that was because of PK's course. Um, you know, I was able to quickly to move to a different location um, and, I would say in the past, um, just in the past month, the like one of the factors, days on market has gone from um, you know 50 days down to 42 days just in the past month. For and, this suburb? Yeah, this suburb, yeah. yeah. And also asking prices have increased for three bedroom homes 18K, mm -hmm. according to one of the um, sources of data. So yeah, it's kind of it, it's cool, but it's kind of um, you know going in trending in the right direction. It's warming up nicely. Yeah, no, that that's a good, and that's a really good insight for everyone who's watching as well. If you're getting constantly outbid, the market is too hot, you can actually use data to find suburbs that are cooler, the way you can buy easier, and then you will ride the entire growth cycle, just like um, David will for this. And then you actually have time to step back, think, sleep on it, and you know, find these value add um, you know, ideas. So you're buying positive cash flow, high growth under market value, but then the fourth thing you're actually manufacturing or at least having the ability to manufacture value as well, which is, you know, you, you can't go wrong if you're making money four ways. Um, okay, and, and maybe, you know, just to kind of delve into the data a little bit, um, you know, obviously we're not just looking at two or three data factors, there's so many checks and balances and thresholds and weightings and things. Was the course easy to understand in terms of the data like you know you you have an IT background IT sales so you know you're you're um, a sort of you could say a white collar professional but is the course or is the data would you say it's easily understood by anyone regardless of their background or regardless of their education level yeah absolutely um, it's just super easy I mean very very easy um, but at the same time, I do appreciate the complexity behind it as well, um, the way you've weighted everything, um, you know, and, and the way you've kind of prioritised 
the, the data factors. Um, so super simple to understand, super simple to um, you know learn and go ahead with. But yeah, I do appreciate the complexity behind the data, and yeah, I guess the also the value you bring to the course as well, um, just in terms of your experience. So um, yeah, that's kind of does that answer the question? Yeah, no, it it does, and I think everyone's probably wanting to. Uh, I mean, if I was watching the show right now, this this episode, I'd sort of be wanting to ask you, you know, at the start, we talked about how you got it under market value, or 20 or 30 or something like that, $30,000. Um, you know, sometimes people don't believe that. They say that, you know, under market value is not possible. So, you know, please, honestly and, and openly, what makes you think it was under market value, you know, based on the comparables? And why did the seller sell it to you at a price, you know, less than what they could have if the market value is truly higher? Like, are you able to just kind of break that down just a little bit to, to kind of give some tips on, on how to find these deals as well? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So this deal was actually on market. So it was advertised um, and it was on the market for, I think, around eight months. So a very, very, very long time. Um, and the, the owner was actually quite um, desperate for, he's building a new house in a, in a, a neighbouring suburb, um, so he needed the money. Um, so I, yeah, basically just put in, put in an offer. I didn't, I could have gone potentially lower, um, but I just put in a fairly strong offer, um, which was pretty low um, compared to, it was priced fairly well to begin with anyway. Um, so, yeah, but the way, the way I knew it was under market value was really, I mean, you can rely on things, you know, online tools, but I wouldn't do that. But if you did want to look at, say, RP data, it was kind of saying it's 37K under market value. But um, if I did my own analysis, which is what I did, looking at properties in, you know, that same pocket of the suburb, um, then, yeah, it's for me, my own analysis is saying it's, you know, um, around 25K under, 27K under market value. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, just did my own analysis, which is all taught in the course. So um, just follow the course, very easy. Um, and yeah, you can pick up a good deal. Yeah, and you don't need RP data or any fancy subscriptions, expensive subscriptions like that. And, you know, sometimes you, you could think that, oh, if it's been on the market for eight months, there must be something wrong with it, right? Like, you know, maybe there's something in it, maybe it's got termites or maybe it's building fidelity problems or, some other issue, but when you actually know what you're looking for, you can find these properties that have become stale because for one reason or another, you know, others have passed them by, but there's actually nothing wrong with them. It's not like it's on a main road. It's not like there's a huge slope. It's not like the soil quality is bad. It's not like it's on a flight path. So many things. It's just a perfect property, but once it's on the market too long, it, people just say, oh, it's, it's been on the market too long, must be something wrong with it. But that doesn't actually mean there is something wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just to jump in there. So the, the big problem with with this is the owner had actually rented out the property um, for about a year and a half, and I mean there aren't that many investors in in Perth. I mean there, there are investors, but um, it's mostly owner occupier kind of driven market at the moment, and um, none of the owner occupiers are really, really, really prepared to wait you know, six to eight months or maybe a year to actually move into the property. Um, mm. So that's kind of, yeah. That's really no, that, that's actually a, a really good insight. I'm, I'm glad you told me, David. And, and guys, like I'm just finding out all this as you are as well. Um, but that's really important. And this is sometimes, I wouldn't say it's a secret, but it's a way to get under market values because owner occupiers can't buy a property that's rented, right? You can't, the seller can't kick out the tenants. It's not possible. And so if you're finding these suburbs like David has that are cool, that aren't super hot, that aren't, you know, haven't already boomed, but are at the bottom of their boom cycle or their growth cycle, then you can actually find these under market deals. You can find these, these options. I mean, even, even myself, for what it's worth, I've recently bought a property and it was passed in at auction. Um, and so, you know, because it was passed in at auction, then there was less interest in it. And I was able to get a, a really, really sharp price. I just literally bought it this year. Um, so just because it's passed in an auction or just because it's been on the market doesn't mean it's a bad deal. You just need to have the confidence, the data, the analytics to know that it's a good deal. 
I think that's a really good insight, David. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And maybe just a couple of last ones. Um, one that I want to ask you is, you know, you're, you're new to, to property investing. You were previously thinking about buying a place in Sydney and then you kind of changed tact. Like what is your long-term goal? Like let's say, you know, no one can sort of retire rich from property in five years, despite what all the advertising says, but let's say 10 years, 15 years, maybe even 20 years. What's your objective? Like why are you, why are you doing all this in the first place? Yeah, I mean, again, it's kind of I'm following your the strategy that's in the um, PK's property um, course, which really just makes it super simple um, to understand. But um, I'd probably over the next two years, I'd look to buy maybe five or six and, yeah, just continue the journey. Um, I don't know how far I can get with it. It's, I mean, 10 years is a long time away. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just want to... It's definitely a no-brainer for anybody who's thinking of doing the course. I'm not being paid to say this. <laughs> I'm just telling you just to try and help people. Um, it's an absolute no-brainer to do this course. It's going to save you a lot and you're going to just fast track and get on, you know, move forward. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, my goal is just to keep buying. That's really, I don't really have any set number. but Yeah, uh, kind of you and me both are on the same page there. <laughs> um, and maybe just one last one. Sorry, I just thought of this. Um, I think probably everyone's thinking about it. You know, there's a, a lot of, you could say, fear um, amongst people, especially aspiring property investors, because media headlines, interest rates rising, inflation, all this kind of thing. Does it affect you or do you understand the data more than others or um, do you have a different mindset in which you go and invest your money? Like, how do you think about you know, every year for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, there's been a reason not to invest. There's always something going on. Like, how do you think about investing right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched some of your videos, PK, and I think you explain it really well. Um, yeah, I mean, the data kind of is probably more powerful than, you know, what you see in the media. So just follow the data is what I would say. Um, and so that, that's the first thing. Um, and you, you only have to look at other property investors out there, like, like yourself, other people who are successful, and that they just continue to invest in, in any time. So um, I think it's about knowing, you know, markets within markets, which is, I think, something you teach, um, just knowing where to invest um, and just um, <clears throat> follow the data and just learn, learn how to do it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't listen to the media too much. Um, and, yeah, as long as... Um, your yield is okay or if you've got like a good income um, then you've really got nothing to write it, worry about but as long as the yield's fine anyway interest rates are not really going to do much um, so yeah I'm not really worried yeah no it's good to hear it's it's a fresh perspective but yeah look I'm super grateful um, David for you making the time obviously you bought a positive cash flow property it's already growing you didn't get it off market, but you didn't need to. You got it under market value anyway. And, and maybe in a couple of years, of course, we'll be in touch. But in a couple of years, we'll do another video. And hopefully we're talking about you having bought six properties or five. Or the number is less important than what they are. But yeah, that, that would be a really cool thing to do. <laughs> no, thank you very much. I really appreciate um, yeah, your course and your mentorship. It's been um, great. Awesome. No, congratulations again. And, and for everyone who's, who's listening or, or watching, hopefully, um, you know, obviously this talk, we're talking about the course. <laughs> so there's like a little bit of marketing and stuff in there, but hopefully the kind of um, insights that, that David shared and we talked about how we got it under market, hopefully those things are things that you can sort of put in your pocket and go apply, you know, go apply them you know, invest in property, don't really mind whether you do it with me or you do it yourself, but just do it. You know, it's, it's, um, the fruits will, will bear, you know, you'll, you won't regret it. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you got value, hit the subscribe button give it a like, give it a thumbs up and, um, yeah, any questions, just comment below. I'll definitely answer them. If David sees them, he might answer them as well. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, David, thank you so much. Thanks, PK. Catch you later.